Now the pests begin to work. Smut, worm, beetle, blight, bugs, hoppers. Who said gardening was just pleasant exercise? Here's the first pest, the common cabbage worm eating holes in the newest cabbage leaves. Like a good gardener, Dick is on the job to protect the crop from all these pests and diseases. The cabbage worm's mama, a small white butterfly, lays its eggs in the leaves. A serving of stomach poison with a cabbage should finish Mr. Cabbage Worm. Rotenone and pyrethrum dust have been made scarce by the war, so cryolite dust is used. Dick does a good job of it. This cabbage is sick with the yellows or wilt. Once the fungus that causes wilt gets into the soil, it takes years to get rid of it. Next time, Dick will use wilt-resistant varieties like Jersey Queen, Marion Market, and Globe. The easy way to control insects and diseases is to attack them before they become too numerous. Flea beetles eat holes in potato leaves. Bordeaux mixture and calcium arsenate combined is the remedy for insects and leaf diseases of potatoes. To make two and a half gallons of Bordeaux, Dick dissolves three ounces of powdered copper sulfate in water. Then he makes a thin paste of three ounces of hydrated lime and water. This is put into the pail, stirred, and the Bordeaux mixture is made. To this may be added two tablespoonfuls of calcium arsenate to kill potato bugs and other leaf-eating insects. Easy, isn't it? Bordeaux is also a good spray for grapes, tomatoes, and roses. Dick sprays potatoes with Bordeaux about once every two weeks. Late potatoes need more sprayings than early ones. Now the peas are ready. Excellent source of vitamin C. Cabbage, too, is ready to eat. Another excellent source of vitamin C, especially raw. It should be grown in every victory garden. A solid four-pound head, good for kraut or for storing. Cabbage is available in the garden over a long period. Carrots are rich in vitamin A, needed for night vision and building up resistance to disease. Luscious raspberries are ripening. Such delicious small fruits should be in every victory garden. Uh-oh, those pesky bugs again. This time it's the Mexican bean beetle, a bad pest in the south and east. The young yellow beetles may strip a plant completely in a week or two. A complete generation occurs in 35 days. Lodinone and cryolite dust is the remedy. Beetles feed on the undersides of the leaves, so Dick makes sure to reach them with the dust. One of the common causes of failure of lima and green and wax snap beans is bacterial blight. Leaves are blighted. Pods and seeds are spotted. This disease is carried with a seed. Western-grown seed from reliable firms is recommended. Tomatoes are troubled by wilk, caused by a fungus that lives in the soil and attacks through the roots, getting into the sap-carrying tubes and shutting off the water supply. The plants die. This blackened, woody tissue is the sign of wilt. Only resistant varieties should be grown on wilt-infested land. The fungus does not damage seriously resistant varieties like Marglobe, Rutgers, Pritchard, and Pan America. A similar disease affects eggplant. 
Note the darkened tissue in the cut stem. The remedy is rotation of crops. The clean white appearance of this stem indicates a healthy plant. Here's the pesky old corn ear worm. Eggs are laid and hatched in the silk. A mixture of white mineral oil and pyrethrum in the silk at the right time helps to control them. Smut, another corn enemy, attacks all parts of the plant. On tassels, it does not lower yields much, but on or below the ear, it is damaging. Leaf blights also affect corn. Sprays do not control these diseases, but resistant varieties of corn are being developed. Downy mildew is one of several leaf diseases that interfere with successful production of cucumber and related crops. Another is anthracnose. It affects both the leaves and the fruit. It spots and blights watermelons and muskmelons, decreasing yields and reducing quality of fruit. Bordeaux and copper lime dust are used for these diseases. This garden pest is easy to stop. Just keep the gate closed and the fence tight. No holes. Zinnias are in bloom. And the crops are beginning to roll out. The last of the early Irish cobblers. Certified seed helped to make a good yield. Good quality, too. Free from scab and uniform in shape. Much of the nutritional value of beets is in the tops, so it's wise to use them young when the tops are edible. Perhaps the number one garden crops, they keep ripening over a long period and are an important source of vitamin C, which is often deficient in our diets. When properly cooked or canned, there is not much loss of this vitamin. Tomatoes are easily canned. One bushel will fill 12 quart jars. At least 20 quarts per person should be put up. Corn tops against the sky. Yellow varieties of corn contain vitamin A. Both white and yellow contain small amounts of minerals and vitamins as well as starch and sugar. Green peppers, rich in vitamins C and A. Pole beans to use, green, dried, or canned. And Swiss chard. Chard can be used throughout the summer. The Holder Garden has plenty of such green leafy vegetables, Turnip greens, mustard greens, spinach and collards, all fine for fall and winter use. And that just about covers the Holter Victory Garden. Just one of thousands of such farm gardens. Just a sample that you can match in most any community in America. Each a health insurance policy, a dooryard savings bank. Each a vitamin mine from which you can take stuff more precious than silver or gold. But remember what Grandpa says. No work, no garden. Get what that means. No work, no spuds. No work, no turnip, no tank. No flying fortress, no victory. Bear that in mind, all you victory gardeners, and work for victory.